I've been making some billboards, so stick around and I'll show you exactly how I did it. Well, good afternoon everyone and welcome back to Piccadilly Sidings. So as you've heard in the introduction, this video is all about making those billboards. There are two of them and I'll explain that in a bit. Now they are completely scratch built. So I'm gonna take you over to Tinkercad, give a very brief outline of what I was putting together and then we'll go and actually do it. All right, speak to you soon. All right, welcome back. Here we are at Tinkercad again, ready to 3D print. So all I've done is literally just use these tools down the side to create each of the different items. Now, this is just a flat plane with a rectangular prism running all the way around the outside. And then the same with these. And you literally combine them using these tools at the top here. Okay, so we've got the railings over there and we've got the structural supports for these boards at the bottom. Now, hopefully you can see that they are individual boards, one after the other, okay? And then it's a case of creating one of those boards and then duplicating them by copy paste. And then you just put this um, structure over the top and again, just join it together using these tools at the top here. Okay, that's pretty much it. Now, if you're reasonably computer minded, it shouldn't be that difficult to be honest with you. However, um, I know there's a number of people out there who wouldn't want to touch a computer to save their life. And I fully understand that. And that obviously that's that's down to each individual. But there's nothing to say you can't make it out of this stuff, which is just square, square um, shaped rod, plastic card. So e everything here could be made out of this type of stuff, obviously different sizes and different lengths and all the rest of it. But... There's no reason why you can't actually just cut the pieces and glue them all together using something like this glue coming in. All right, that's the glue I've got. There are many, many others out there. So let's go to the workbench now and I'll start showing you how I put this together. Oh, welcome back. So you can see in front of you, this is the latest thing that I've been printing on the 3D printer. And um, I'm learning that the less you print in one go, there is a greater chance of that item succeeding. Um, because I'll get if you go from one item to another, you tend to get more stringing going from that. And then the printer catches it as it goes. And then you end up pulling bits off the off the bed and it just creates a big mess. So it's uh, it's better to try and print things individually. That's what I'm finding on my setup. So I'm just going to start gluing this together. So obviously I've got the actual board itself, the stand. That is the, um, the platform that somebody would stand on. I've got the supports for that. And then there's obviously a railing. That railing ha I obviously did flat. And then whilst the bed was hot, I had to sort of peel it up and then sort of do bend it up. And I had to hold this flat against the hot bed just to flatten it out because obviously it wanted to move. But I think that's acceptable for, you know, it's not perfect, but it'll, it'll certainly do what I want it to do. So anyway, I'm going to start putting this together. I'm not going to um, spend ages doing this, as you can appreciate. Just a bit of glue, putting the different parts together, trying to get this so it's lined up with the top edge of that horizontal but also centrally this way as well. I think that's pretty much there. Just a little bit just along the top there. And then it can glue to the bottom of the board as well. That's what I'm thinking. Now for these vertical pieces, which I'm going to put a bit of glue just down here. This piece hasn't quite stuck yet. A piece of glue there. That sits and there like that. All right, so what I've done is um, I've obviously finished gluing these uh, notice boards together, but also given them a coat of 
uh, Halford's Grey Primer. Loads of other brands are available, obviously. But what I want to do now is um, I'm going to give them a coat of the anthracite colour. And um, the idea of this is I want them to look quite run down, but that would be the base colour that I'm going to use as if they were new. So I'm going to paint them first and then we'll come back and see how we're going to create the rotting effects and all the streaking effects on the back in particular, like so, that sort of thing. OK, speak in a minute. OK, so I've um, um, obviously put the base coat on that. Now, the next stage is to use a very dry brush and I'm going to use the Administratum Grey that, that I seem to always use. And I'm going to get as much of the paint off as I can, so I'm going to dry brush it. OK, so twisting the brush in different directions to get the paint off. So twisting it in my fingers and then I'm going to streak up and down with this. Like that. Let's choose some of these two colours. Now I do use these same colours for rust, but it's a slightly different approach in the sense that this is going to be put on very sparingly in different places. And I'm literally just going to streak it up and down. Now one of well both of them will have I've got two of them by the way. Both of them will have an image on, but one is, uh, how do I phrase it? One is more of a damaged image, as if it's like the back, the backing has um, come off. So again, it's just a little bit. I'm just going to dab it on around. Okay, right now for the white. Uh, picking out odd bits here and there. See, no two boards would necessarily be the same. And I want to indicate that the bottom of that edge there has probably started to rot a little bit. Right, another thing which um, I hadn't done, I should have, is to indicate parts of the board which are sort of started to peel off. So I'm literally just going to dab on some colour and dab it on. I've created a line across the top of the area that I'm going to indicate. And just doing it randomly. I'm only doing it on the, the actual board itself. Right, this next stage is literally just go over whilst it's still wet and just sort of smear in a little bit of this colour, but leave it dark on the top edge. Don't want it all the same colour. It's to indicate parts of the board which are now peeling. That's why you want the white around the bottom edge because it would catch the light. And actually another thing you can do, a little bit more watered down white, is to go around the area around it. Oops, a little bit more colour on maybe. Just sort of whiten up the areas. See, in painting, if you want something to look, um, something to have a contrast, you make extremes of light and dark next to each other. So if you've got something light and you want it to stand out, you make the area around it dark. Right. Now we've got, this is dried off now, and I'm going to use a fine liner pen. Uh, lots of brands are available, and this one just happens to be 0.05. So what I'm going to do 
is just draw the tiniest of lines around the tops and then we'll blend them back in a bit. Hopefully you can see the effect there. What I don't want is hard black lines. And just soften them a bit, that's all. I like so. Okay, right, now for the posters. Now, I've literally just gone into Google and printed off a couple of posters which I feel are appropriate and then measured the inside edge from there through to the inside edge there. Hopefully you can see where I'm pointing. So it's not the overall edge, it's the inside edge of the frame, top and bottom. And I found these two. Uh, so I've got a basic panel which has just had poster after poster after poster. And this one, um, which is a lot more better condition, but I do want to distress it slightly because I don't want it to give the impression that this has just been put on, even though this is quite an old poster. So I want to make it look as if it's old. So I'm going to get those glued on with just a standard Pritt stick and I'll join you again in a minute. Right, so that one's pretty much done. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'll be that'll be all right, and I'm, I'll be quite happy with that to go on the layout as it is. Now this one, I want to give the impression it's peeling, so I am actually going to tear it. You might think no, but I do want to give the impression that it's starting to come off. So this one, I'm going to put on with a wet glue because I want it to look damaged and streaked and all sorts. So I'll just get some wet glue and we'll put it on there and I'll see what it's like. All right, so we go, put a little bit on, not a massive amount. And then just spread that around. I'm just gonna put a bit of water in that. Like so. Now I must stress, Although I want these poster boards to look run down and battered and torn, some people are bound to suggest, well, they should be dilapidated and bits should be falling off. No. Um, in the same way when I did the footbridge, even though it's a heritage line, a footbridge, um, if it's absolutely falling down, would be dangerous and therefore it would be dangerous for the trains. So I don't want... Uh, to put anything on that's actually going to cause a problem for the trains if that makes sense so I'm literally just going to peel that back slightly because obviously it's stuck itself down a bit and you can see the fact that some of the ink is coming off and that's fine So I'm going to just put a bit more glue on it because I want it to look battered, remember, as if it's been up there for a while. So I want some of the ink to start coming off. So by doing this, it hopefully should just start to take the surface of the paper off a little bit. And then it's varnish time. Right, actually, what I think I'll do with this one is a very similar effect, I think, because this one would look much better if it got peely bits on it. So let's wipe that out. And then around here, so to give it a little bit of 3D texture, if you like, and give some 3D effects too. look a lot better once it's dry um, so I'll show you that in a minute right moving on to the railings now I printed this off um, with the idea of just sticking it on as it is 
um, rusting it up and making it look dilapidated and broken in certain places. But to be honest with you, it's too thick that it doesn't look quite right. So what I'm going to do is give it a bit of a key, uh, just rough it up a bit on both sides like that, because I've, um, the 3D printer has got a glass bed on it and uh, it, it leaves the plastic ultra shiny, which is great if that's what you're after. But uh, if you're gonna paint something, it's not always the easiest thing to do. Uh, so, right, I've taken that, that bit off now and I'm going to remove the bottom part of the railing, like so. Like that. I'm not too worried about the vertical posts, but it's the actual horizontal rail that I'm a little bit concerned about being a bit too thick. So I'm going to take my ruler, place it over the top, and then just press under. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing, but I'm literally just going to take the slightest slither off it. So I'm pressing now for dear life just to take the top side off. And if it goes a bit thin and thick, I'm really not that first. So that's come out fine, like that, okay? And what I can do then is break it in certain places and then twist it up, like that. And the other side would be drooping down a little bit and sort of like so. the other two up like that so hopefully that makes some sense so I'll do the same as I did like I said with this one to these and then we'll look at sticking them onto the actual panels right so that's all dried now um, quite happy with it. it's got a couple of shiny bits on this one but I'm really not that worried by it I think it'll be absolutely fine um, I'll show you the other one when it's on the layout, um, but if you look carefully, you can see it's quite textured and um, that's the kind of look I was after really, so that as as it's all become quite windswept and battered over the years, and then the, paint, the paper starts to come off and it's sort of giving that worn look. Now I'm going to start gluing these on. I'm going to use um, the YooHoo glue for that uh, because this one is a gel, so I'm going to put a bit just like that, a bit just on there, like that, like that. So I will get the other one glued on and then the next time you see it will be on the layout itself. All right, let's be convinced. So there we are, there's that particular billboard in place as you've seen from earlier parts of the video and also any images on Facebook as well. But this particular billboard, I wanted to give the impression it's had many, many posters over the years and nobody's bothered to put one up um, over, the, over the past 10, 15 years. And the reason for that is because it's going to be an area of this part is going to be slightly forgotten. Now, I know that sign, the Piccadilly siding sign, is in slightly better condition. I might deteriorate it a little bit. I'll have a think about it. I might, I might not. But the reason for all of this is there's going to be a waiting room in this area here, which will come out about half the distance of the width of the platform, okay? And beyond that, it's going to be not a no-go area because obviously if people need to get on a train you know people will go up there but generally speaking the area to get on the train is going to be down here and obviously down that way so people generally won't go up that end um, the trains that come in here generally won't fill the whole platform and even if they did it would be just the locomotive at this far end and not much else okay so I want to give it the impression that it's actually just forgotten. Now, if I take you down to the other one, so pan you down, pan you down, pan you down along the platform and to 
there. Now, this particular one is a little bit more cared for in the sense of it's had a poster in the last 40, 50 years. I'm guessing that one's possibly even 1950s. Um, maybe even 40s. I don't know if there's anybody out there who knows when this poster was up and remembers it, then please do put in the comments when you think it was. Now, actually, the ladders, I didn't um, tell you about those, uh, but they are scale model scenery. And it was just easier to use that as I'd already got some than try and 3D print um, because I'd obviously have to go in there, put, build it in, the, in Tinkercad and then print it off, whereas I'd already got the the ladder so it's just as easy to do that okay i'll just pan you out so you can see roughly where that is but uh, as you can see now when you walk onto the platform down the path here you'd immediately come into contact with that particular sign and it would just give you the sort of heritage feel even though the station's quite um, battered and bruised if you like anyway i'm going to leave the video there and um, so i hope you've enjoyed it and seeing how to go about building these particular um, billboards what i might do um, in the next few days is i might make these uh, litter bins a little bit bigger because i'm looking at them thinking they are a tad small so i might just um, increase those by a few millimeters so we'll leave it there and the top video is going to be all about um, the steam gala and the few bits and bobs that ended up on the layout um, from the last video and the second video that's going to appear on your screen I think let's have a reminder of the nightmare of building these signals <laughs> all right take care everybody and I'll catch you soon bye-bye